Hello and welcome to Triage, timely conversations for healthcare professionals, a podcast created and produced by KNL Gates. Each episode is designed to highlight important developments in health law and analyze the impact on our clients and friends of the firm. We hope you enjoy this podcast. Hello, and thank you for listening to Triage, Rapid Legal Lessons for Busy Healthcare Professionals. My name is Sarah Staples, and I'm an associate in the firm's Nashville, Tennessee office. I'm joined by my colleague, Leah Dior Richardson, a partner in the firm's Research Triangle Park, North Carolina office. Today, we will be talking about proposed remote therapeutic monitoring codes under the Medicare Physician Fee Schedule proposed rule for the calendar year 2022. Leah, can you explain exactly what is remote therapeutic monitoring? Sure. Thanks, Sarah. Remote therapeutic monitoring, or RTM, is a new proposed category of digital health services that's meant to provide reimbursement for monitoring of certain non-physiological data. The description of the proposed codes appear to be limited to the status of respiratory and musculoskeletal system status, as well as therapy adherence and therapy response. How is RTM different from remote physiologic monitoring? So RTM is different from remote physiologic monitoring, or RPM, because RPM is used to measure physiologic data, such as blood pressure, blood sugar, heart rate, and the like. RPM codes are also not specific to certain systems like the, the proposed RTM codes, which are appear to be specific to respiratory, musculoskeletal, and therapy adherence and response. So they're much more broad and can be utilized for monitoring uh, a broad set of physiological data. In the proposed rule, CMS also indicates that RTM data can be self-reported by the patient, whereas RPM data must be collected and uploaded by an RPM device. What about the practitioners that can furnish and bill for RTM services? Yeah, so this is the most interesting facet of CMS's proposal and the issue that CMS appears to be struggling with the most on how to implement these new codes. So in the proposed rule, CMS explains that the primary billers for the RTM codes are projected to be nurses and physical therapists. This is in contrast to the RPM codes, which are considered evaluation and management or E&M services, and therefore can only be billed by physicians and mid-level providers. For this reason, RTM codes are classified as general medicine codes and not E&M codes. However, CMS states in the proposed rule that a review of the proposed RTM codes identified an issue that disallows physical therapists and other practitioners that are not physicians in mid-levels to bill for those codes. So CMS states that by modeling the RTM codes on the RPM codes, incident two services became part of the RTM codes, and as a result, the RTM codes as constructed cannot be billed by these other practitioners. It's not clear what CMS means by incident two services became part of the RTM codes, although it's clear that CMS thinks, you know, as currently proposed, only physicians and mid-levels would be permitted to furnish and bill for the RTM codes because they're viewing them as having to be billed as incident two services. So another challenge that CMS notes in the proposed rule is that the two RTM treatment management codes are not E&M codes and therefore cannot be designated as care management services like the analogous RPM codes. So since care management codes can be provided under general supervision, a physician or mid-level doesn't have to be physically present, but because the RTM codes as currently proposed could not be care management codes, they would actually require direct supervision um, of auxiliary personnel. Right. So it sounds like there are multiple uh, issues that CMS is looking for stakeholders to comment on. 
Yeah, CMS is um, specifically seeking comment on how it might remedy the issues related to the RTM code construction in order to permit practitioners who aren't physicians or mid-levels to actually furnish and bill for those codes. CMS is also seeking comment on the typical type of device um, that would be used to collect the various kinds of RTM data um, and associated costs with those devices. And I also think there's an opportunity to comment on additional issues such as, you know, the description of the codes and perhaps additional non-physiological data that might be useful, um, therefore advocating for a broadening of the code description. Thank you, Leah, for these insights. And thank you to our listeners for your interest in this triage episode on CMS's proposed remote therapeutic monitoring code. If you have any topics that you would like to see discussed via triage, you can click the Contact Us link located at the top of the triage website, or you can email us. We would love to hear from you. We at KNL Gates will continue to monitor changes to CMS reimbursement for digital health services and provide ongoing updates. But in the meantime, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us. Thanks again. Thanks again for listening to Triage, timely conversations for healthcare professionals. New episodes are available for download through Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. By subscribing to Triage, you will receive timely notifications for each new episode. Also, if you have any topics you would like to hear discussed on Triage, please don't hesitate to email triagesupport at klgates.com. We would love to hear from you.